Hey losers, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with the, I think there's eight books here that I'd like to tell you about. This is my half month wrap up for April and I'm filming this a couple days early so that I can have it out. Uh, so I can have it out by like the mid month mark. Uh, so, um, let's see. So there are actually like a couple books that I'm like so, so, so close to finishing, but we'll have to talk about them at the end of the month. And that's okay. That's okay. I don't know why I get so like anxious about that. It's so, it's so silly, but, um, I mean, I still have eight books to tell you about. Uh, I have six books here that I read for old school April, which is really exciting. I have two books that I finished like right at the beginning of the month because I had read most of them in March. And so I didn't want to count them towards old school April, but they were both, oh my God, they were both so fucking good. And I'm really excited to tell you about them. One actually I'm going to do a separate review on Actually, I need to film today. I've been so bad about that. So to start out with some stats, I read eight books total in the first half of the month. Six of these were off of my TBR. So these are books that I owned previous to this year. I read 2,411 pages, which is about 200 pages a day. Three of these books were straight up horror. I read two that were like really lightly horror. They felt more like literary horror, but I am really being nitpicky when I say that. I read a romance book, a crime thriller, and one nonfiction book. The oldest book I read this month came out in 1993. Then we jumped to 2016, 2017, two books from 2019, one book from 2021, and two recent releases. So those came out in 2024. As far as the series I read, I did read a book from a series that I definitely will not be continuing with, and one that I read that it's like, probably I won't, but also maybe I will. I don't know. I have to talk to a friend about it. I know she has more books from this series. Maybe I'll borrow one from her. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe. And then as far as the read what you own challenge goes, I read six books that count towards that, which puts me at 65% complete. The end is somewhere near here. Let's talk about the one that uh, I'm not going to do a separate review on first. This is Diavola by Jennifer Marie Thorne. This is a book I borrowed from my library. I listened to this on audio and this is a new release. I don't remember if I included it in my most anticipated I remember hearing about it and I was like kind of so-so, but when I saw that my library had it and I was like, you know what, why not? I'm kind of, because I'm doing this read what you own thing, I am feeling a little bit of that FOMO, you know, when it comes to the new releases that are coming out that I'm not reading. So I was like, oh, well, you know, since my, since I have access to this through my library, like why not? And oh my God, I'm so glad that I requested this because I liked this so much. This is like, oh my God, I just, okay. This is about a family on vacation in Italy, an American family on vacation in Italy and this book really, I, I nearly called my family individually and like wanted to thank them for not being the nightmare people in this book because, oh my God, the main character, I just felt so bad for her, her family. They're just each their own tiny nightmare. It was, it was terrible. Um, she, just puts up with a lot throughout this book. So one part of it is like this family drama thing. And one part of it is almost like a haunted house book in Italy. And they go stay at this beautiful manor in this really tiny, like Italian village. The main character is like the only one who's bothered to learn any Italian or anything like that. So her family's really leaning on her. 
uh, this entire trip, you know, to do everything for them with the locals and stuff like that. It, it just, the whole trip is exhausting. I, I really encourage you to pick this up because I, I think it's so good and I don't wanna go too far into detail. I think it's so, so good. But they find out that maybe there is more to this place than they expected and everything is chaos. This book was so good. Then the other book I'd like to tell you about, this was an early review copy I got from NetGalley. This is Fragile Animals by Genevieve Jagger. And as far as I know, this is coming out April 25th. I will double check when I do my separate review on this. So just keep that in mind. I don't know for sure. The last time I checked it was. And this is like a literary fiction novel with a really like brief touch of horror because there is like a vampire in this. But the focus really isn't on the vampire, which is like kind of interesting. I don't know. This is a really strange, like really heavy emotional book that took me a really long time to read, honestly, because not because I didn't like it, because I really did love this book. This is a book that I'm going to be buying a copy of for myself, but because it had a lot of like really strong, heavy emotions. The main character has a lot of shit she is trying to work through in the book, kind of, but it's like, it really takes to the end of the book for her to even realize this, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of character development kind of throughout the book and she's talking about the, these traumas in her past. So it's it's like a really, heavy book and it took me a really a really I really had to take my time with it you know what I mean but oh my god this book was so excellent and if you're um, interested in hearing more look for my review on this really good though what's next Wormwood by Poppy Seabright this came out in 1993 and this is a short story collection. So there's not much to tell you about this. Oh, I'm gonna take my bookmark out of there. That's how I keep losing my bookmarks. Ugh, why do I do that? Uh, this is, yeah, I don't know. This has a lot of like Southern Gothic tones. Quite a few of these stories talk about like music, which I thought was interesting. They really all take place like in the South, like Louisiana, Georgia, stuff like that. Uh, locations like that I should say um let's see what were what were some standout stories I liked the story xenophobia I liked a Georgia story optional music for voice and piano footprints in the water there were quite I mean really I liked this collection not quite like a one that I would say like oh my god this is my favorite but almost all the stories in here were really good. Um, there was w like two that had the same characters in it. So it was like, oh, I know those guys, which I <laughs> always really like, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, this was really good, you know? And this is the second Poppy Z Bright book that I've read and I will definitely be continuing on with his work. I think that he is such a great author and um, he's got a really unique voice. This is like, one where it's it's hard for me to not immediately like go out and start hunting down more of his books because it's like oh i i just i want to read more i've got drawing blood uh but that's it then and i know that there are more i always hear about lost souls which i don't have and it's like oh god what if i i just i fear like what if there's a cheap copy right now that i that i could have i just my brain is so, so dumb. Just stop it. But I do really want a copy of that book. Uh, okay, chill out. Next. Um, oh, maybe I should mention. Uh, so this is one that I read for Old School April. And for me, this hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight prompts. At least uh, this did Retro Vintage Yearbook Prompt, Mini Me, 
Reading Rainbow, Spellmaster, which I've done for every single book. I've been able to um, find a phrase in the in the uh, words on the cover or the letters on the cover. So I spelled barf me out. I included say anything since there were a couple stories with musicians in this. Quite a few prompts. And then next, I would like to tell you about a book I didn't really like so much, which I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, this is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlet St. Clair. And this is part of the Hades and Persephone series that she has written. This came out in 2019. And this is a, obviously a Greek mythology thing, a romance story. And I was reading it and I, I just, I wasn't really, wasn't really feeling it. And I have a friend who reads a lot of romance novels and she likes this series, but she was telling me, she's like, okay, Persephone is really annoying at first. Uh, she does have character growth though, but she's really immature at first. Or maybe she even meant like in the first couple, I don't know, I don't know how many books there are, um, early in the series. So I kind of expected that, that's okay. You know, there is character growth, but it's like, I guess I just don't understand. When when there is a romance novel and you don't understand why the people are attracted to each other, what they see in each other, you know what I mean? Um, because it's like, I know what I like about my partner and I could tell people what I like about my partner, you know what I mean? But like, why? isn't the author telling us what these people like about each other, you know? Because I don't get that here. I don't get that at all. There's no like tension. I feel like this story had the opportunity to have so much angst in it and it like didn't, you know, because there are these other factors like Persephone's mother who's really controlling and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, you, you you dropped the ball. You could have had such an angsty story and you really, you, you didn't. Um, there's like this bargain that they make with each other. Oh, she just really fucking shit the bed. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's like, there's no tension. There's no angst. They just like each other for some reason. And one thing I will say that this wasn't, I, I am, I'm a really, I'm a starting out with romance. So I really like the more fantasy uh, monster romance. I don't really read contemporary stuff. So I, I didn't really have the vocabulary for this, I guess, when I read it. But there was something about it that I didn't, it was like something about the, the dynamic between um, Hades in this book, who's like a club owner and stuff like that. And then Persephone, who's like a working girl kind of, you know, um, that I just, something about it was weird and I didn't like it. And I saw a reviewer say like, oh, this is just like a, a billionaire romance. And it was like, oh, I think that's what it is. I think that's what I don't like. It's like a, what I imagine would be a billionaire romance, but like in disguise. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't seek that stuff out because that does not interest me in the least, you know, anything about a dynamic like that. So I don't know. This is the series I was talking about where it's like, I don't think I will continue on with this. Like maybe, uh, I have, I have to talk to my friend about it. She has the other books in the series and like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll borrow one from her. I don't know. I have to talk to her about it. <laughs> Um, so this for me fulfilled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight prompts for old school April for Spellmaster. I spelled oh snap on the cover. I really had such, such a fun time doing the Spellmaster prompt for these books. And then on to next. Ooh. Lady from the Black Lagoon, Hollywood Monsters and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick by Mallory O'Meara. This is a nonfiction history account of Millicent Patrick who designed the creature from the Black Lagoon. Creature, 
from the Black Lagoon. And this came out in 2019. And this is kind of, you know, the title says it all. Uh, this is a woman who did something that was kind of, she was a pioneer in her field, basically, for uh, women. And she is a figure who's kind of been lost to history for some reason, even though personally she was really vivacious and lively and because of kind of politics and society she was pushed down and someone took a lot of credit for her work who shouldn't have and at the time like lots of people thought that somebody else designed this like really iconic creature when it wasn't him it was millicent patrick who also did other really cool shit like uh was an animator for disney and things like that one of the very first female animators uh so this is a history kind of a biography of millicent patrick it talks about her father who helped build hearst castle which if you live in california you know that's um kind of a another iconic feature near LA. It's also kind of a memoir of the author Mallory O'Meara and she talks about her own life um, as an author or um, as a filmmaker, um, things that she's experienced. She talks about writing the book and her experience doing that. So this was really good. I liked this a lot. I learned a lot of things. I've never seen the creature from the Black Lagoon, so now I'm like, oh my god, I really have to do that. I've really never, I've not seen very many of the Universal Monster movies, so embarrassing, I know. But also, look at this book, it matches my hair. <laughs> is this why I picked it up? No, but is this why it appeals to me? Yes. So for Old School April, this ticked off one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine, um, that I wrote on here. Notably the VCR prompt because we're dealing with like old school animation, old school movies, shit like that. Uh, Spellmaster, I spelled out, why don't you marry it on this cover? I, like I said, I had so much fun spelling things out for Spellmaster. Um, so yeah, this was really, interesting and it, it just it really makes you wonder especially because Millicent Patrick was um a white woman and you have to wonder if you know if people who have more privilege than others are being forgotten and their works are being claimed by others and things like that you just you have to we have to assume that there are so, so, so many underprivileged people who these same things are happening to and it's like, we just don't even know about it. And you know, it's really such a fucking shame. Next book on my list, something, oh my God, I finished this the other day. I, this is, I think one of my new, very, very, very favorite books. This is Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones. This was published in 2016. And this is more of a literary horror book. Horror, I'd say, because of the werewolf aspect. You know, there is some blood and cuts in this. Um, I would say there is some content warning for sad animal things that happen in here, but um, I always say this, but I do feel more sensitive to that. However, um, I mean, it was pretty sad. So I don't know. Um, it, it is kind of, you do kind of know when it's coming. And I think that you could skip over it, if that helps. But this is about a character. I We don't ever know his name, but he lives with his aunt and his uncle. Um, he's being raised by them. His mother died when he was born and they are a family of werewolves and he at this point can't shift and really doesn't even know if he can but he suspects that he should be able to uh because of certain things certain 
things in his past and his present and uh signs you know he, he just he just really he really hopes that he'll be able to do this and it's just really character driven character focused about like this is what you're doing is you're reading about this family and how they live how they survive it's a rough life they travel a lot and it really goes deep into i i don't know it like creates a lot of werewolf lore and it was just so fucking good and i think this is my like new favorite werewolf book it's so good and just the detail and the i don't know everything about it i love it and i'm like i just i want to read it again immediately when i'm done in case oops maybe so sad also it's like it's bittersweet and like a little bit heartbreaking but also the end is a little bit hopeful how does he do it i don't know this did eight prompts for me as well i spelled bodacious then i read plastic by doug wagner this is a like one-off graphic novel about a serial killer who has a girlfriend, Virginia, who is not your typical girlfriend because she is a sex doll. <laughs> and this is kind of like if John Wick really loved sex dolls, right? So it's uh, a story about, um, I think his name is Edwin. Yeah, Edwin. Um, what he would do to get back his girlfriend, Virginia. <laughs> this is just, it's really quirky. It's violent. It's humorous. I wouldn't say this is like my favorite graphic novel that I've ever read, but it was really good. Um, I, you know, it's one you sit down, you read it in one sitting. I, it was a really fucking quirky. Like this guy, he's very strange. He's got some problems, obviously. Uh, he, he talks about Virginia as if she's a real person up and, you know, you can assume some things about the story from there. Uh, it's, it was good. I, I liked this. And um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be holding on to. It's, it's, it's weird. It's a weird one. Uh, this fulfilled seven prompts for old school April, I think. And I don't know. I mean, this is just also what I wrote down um, after I've read them. I've been putting them on story graph and that probably has a more accurate also, this is for me, you know what I mean? Like some things, it's like some of these, like this was a uh, used copy. So it's gonna be different for, some of these are gonna be different. Oh yeah, okay, so this was, yeah, seven, seven prompts. For Spellmaster, I spelled out Sky Dancer. Do you remember those? There were like these like dolls, but they had like wing arms and you would like, pull the string and they would float. I remember one time I had one and it got caught in my hair and I was so terrified because I couldn't get it out. Very frightened. Okay, last book I want to talk about here. I have some strong feelings about because I really fucking did not like this book. And I am definitely, uh, I'm definitely the odd person out here. This is Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. And I say I'm an odd person out because I saw a lot of really good reviews for this, at least on Goodreads from my fellow horror readers. Uh, this came out in 2021. And this is like a fake true crime story. And I should have, I should have known, honestly, when, what is it? Like the foreword or something had James Renner in it who, you know what? I don't like James Renner. I think he's not a very nice person uh, from what I've seen him say on social media and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna say that. So, um, <laughs> so this is written as if Richard Chismar was writing about his past and then also it like fast forwards to his present but like, it's all fictionalized, but it's written as if it's not, you know what I mean? So it's kind of meta. And in his fictionalized past, he's writing about his childhood. And it's like, um, the, the past part of it is this book, 
chasing the boogeyman. And then the present part is like not chasing the boogeyman. It's like an addendum to it. He's growing up and these murders are happening to young girls in their small town. <laughs> I don't know. It was just, for me, I felt this was boring. For me, I felt like he was writing about his childhood in the, in the 1950s instead of in the 1980s. So it felt like he was trying to emulate like a layman or a McCayman or a king, you know, and it couldn't have been because that's not the time period he grew up in. He's talking about doing the shithead stuff and it was all like, oh shucks, like boys will be boys. And you know, it, it was just, it came off as that, I don't know, I, I just, I really did not <laughs> like vibe with this as you might be able to tell. The true crime stuff I thought was really boring. Like I, he's a, he's a kid when this happens and He's talking about like getting involved in the investigation, but he, it, you know, nothing really happens. And then, okay, and this will be maybe kind of spoilery. So, you know, I'll hold my book down and then I'll hold it back up when I'm done. So in the past, you know, he is kind of involved with this investigation, kind of as like a young adult and then in the future, when it's solved, it's like they just call him up and they're like, we got him, buddy. And then it's like, that's the end of the book, kind of, you know? And then they talk to the guy and he's like, I just wanted to do it. So this is like the most boring true crime, fake true crime book I've ever read. I don't know if I've read very many, honestly. I mean, it wasn't even like a, tr a crime thriller. I don't know, it was, I, I just, I don't know. I just thought it was really boring, I think. And I didn't like the vibes I was getting from this. It just felt really like, I don't know. I, I just feel like you can't write yourself into a story and not give yourself any faults, you know? And it was like, he did give himself some fault. I guess I should say he did give himself some faults like being a shithead kid. But then it was like he didn't actually see himself as a shithead kid, you know? It was like a, a boys, everything was like, oh, boys will be boys. Like he's fucking throwing shit at cars and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> wasn't I a rascal? <laughs> like what? No, what the fuck? Like he's talking about getting drunk at his bachelor party and doing that. It's like, what the fuck? I don't know. I just didn't like. And I'm really, I, maybe I shouldn't even talk about that. So never mind. Um, so I guess that's where I wrap this up. Allegedly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This, wait, let me check story graph. This filled 10 prompts for me. Um, for Spellmaster, I spelled smell you later. Um, I also, this was one where I think I, I rolled C for the Sesame Street, which was to spin a random number generator. A ra Why do I keep calling that? A random letter jump, random letter generator. And I got C, so that's what I picked. Um, this does like Ghost Rider, you know, because a writer he's a writer um so anyways that wraps this wrap up up let's rippity wrap it and uh so yeah those are the eight books i read in the first half of the month <laughs> why did i end on such a poopy note anyway um okay so let me know if you read any of these what you thought about them have you been participating in old school april tell me if you haven't, if you're thinking about it still, um, listen, it's been really so much fun. Let me tell you about a couple things that I've done. First of all, we've been doing like, uh, 
I've been doing like reading, what do they call them? It's not just reading sprints, it's like, what do you do? Pro productivity sprints, whatever you wanna fucking do. We chat a little bit and then we do whatever the fuck we want for like an hour. Um, there's been watch parties, been watching all sorts of shit. We've been watching music videos from like the 80s and the 90s. I've been watching so much X-Files. Um, I've been watching great movies. I've been playing old school video games. I've been eating like, I don't know, just like lots of junk food, honestly. Uh, I've been reading. We're talking about so much stuff. Oh yeah, six out of April on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, we've been doing that up. Um, there's so many great prompts and it's been so, mu so much fun to see what uh, different people are doing for different prompts. There's a lot of creativity on there. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in old school April, I will leave the links with all the information. It is not too late to join. I promise you, if you're like, oh, I thought about it and then April 1st passed and now I don't want to, it's not too late to join. There are still people joining every day. There are, um, so don't be worried about that. What else? Do I have anything else to say? I don't know. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought about it. Even if you liked Chasing the Boogeyman, I won't be mad. I won't be that mad. Anyway, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.